Hey everybody, Wendy Klinky with Blue Cat Studio. Welcome to another session of Technique Tuesday. We're going to talk about the color wheel. And so it's kind of like going back to um, grade school, but we're going to work on some, some mixing and some color and some primaries. So I've started off with some cadmium yellow and I'm using tube paint for mixing. Crimson red. And these are medium quality. And then I actually went with this kind of junky, slightly dead ultramarine blue and then some basic white okay so these this is sort of the triad of the three primaries i think most of us know that pretty well you've got your basic red yellow blue whatever okay so i'm going to grab a small brush here and begin to fill in on the color wheel right and we're going to start in the middle to do some of the mixing and we'll begin with premix or with mixed colors in the middle and then as we work out, we'll actually use some bottle colors to do similar because very oftentimes when we work with stuff like craft paints, um, these, these have some weird pigments that don't necessarily lend themselves quite as nicely to, to blending as, um, as some of our other, as, as the, as the two paints. Okay. So grabbing some basic red. Now you'll notice we've got kind of a nomenclature around them. So we have red, blue, and yellow. So we'll begin with R for red and we will fill in. Hey there, Candy. We'll begin to fill in just the very middle piece, kind of right in here and maybe kind of come up a little bit. Let's do two. That'll be good, right? So that's your basic red. Now um, you're going to need a lot of, a lot of rinse water here, a lot of stuff to wipe things off because this is where we're going to be putting colors down and then moving on and coming back. So it's a little bit messy today. So offload your paint, rinse. And the reason we're putting, oh no, don't you dare cat. Hey, sorry, buddy. Uh-uh, no. <laughs> Cats have been into it today. So now we'll grab some yellow. So where the Y is, we'll fill in these two. Oh, hey, Carrie from Minnesota. Very nice, thanks for joining. And then we have, I know, Somebody says, hi lady, it's it's so relaxing to mix paints. It is. And so there's the yellow. So again, if it's a single color, that's a primary because it is pure yellow, pure red, and then we're gonna go to pure blue. So just a tiny bit and rinse. I've got a couple of things of rinse water here because I'm gonna need it. Boy, so it's looking very shadowed, isn't it? What do we need to do to fix that? Maybe not worry about my own face. Shift the lights a little. Oh, I don't know. Maybe. Okay, whatever. It's fine. All right, and in between, we're always drying the brushes, and now we're going to grab some of this blue, and we'll put it here. Now, in general, tube paints tend to be designed for mixing and not so much designed for use straight out of the tube, whereas bottle paints, again, like the deco arts, the folk arts, the craft smarts, all the things, these really are designed to be straight out of the bottle. Okay, now that we've got the basic blue, yellow, red, we're then going to go ahead and mix out the secondaries. And what I love, oh no, did I just do a thing? Oh my gosh, me and my, hold on. All right, I gotta bring StreamYard back up. I, I killed something. Come on. My mouse. Okay, enter studio. I'm sorry, you guys. Sometimes, like when my mouse is there, I mute and enter studio. Uh, add to stream. Yes, no, no. Oh, Lord. Okay, we're good. Sorry about that. It's Technique Tuesday, not Technical Tuesday. <laughs> Per typical. Anyways, the two paints are meant for mixing, the other ones, not so much. So let's go ahead, and so, so now that we've done the singles, the Y, in order to create the secondary colors, you notice that's just two letters, so it's gonna be a mix of blue and yellow to make green. So we'll grab some yellow here. Now, be, because these are, you know, kind of different, it's not gonna be a one-to-one. -one. So we'll just begin here and start to mix. Now, when you mix colors, sometimes they look a little, a little muddy. You're not going to get that super fresh spring green, right? It's very hard to do. And I might need to be using a slightly different tone of, of blue or yellow or whatever. 
Um, and this is why we're going to do two sets where we do, where we cover um, mixed paints and unmixed paints. So I'm feeling like that's a pretty good green we, we got there and I'm using the palette knife. So we'll go ahead and fill that guy in right here in the middle. I'm just going to use my palette knife to kind of smush some of that stuff off. And now that we've got the green, and because it's all over my thing and I don't want to rinse too, too fast, we're going to grab, um, we're now going to make the tertiaries. And so the tertiary is basically two parts blue to one part yellow. So it's blue and green, if this is green, and this is green and yellow. It's a little bit weird to read, but you'll get used to it. So since we're here, I'm going to err on the side of going lighter first. So squish my green there and grab a hunk of yellow and mix it in. And this guy might need a lot of yellow. And again, these look a little bit strange, you know, in pre-mix or in, um, in the kind of colors that you mix on your own. If I really wanted to get this to a certain place, I might be adding white to kind of brighten it up and pop it. Or I might use like a turquoise instead. And so we can place that kind of yellow green right here in between. And we'll brush it out. And now you can see that we have a yellow, a yellow green or a green yellow, whatever, straight green. And then it's going to go over here to a green blue. So then I'll come back in here and kind of partition off some of this premix green and add some blue to it. And I think if that was a lot lighter, instead of being a deep foresty color, that would come off as nearly turquoise. It'd be very, very pretty. I'm just offloading a little bit of my paint and we'll get that one laid down here now too. These are very dark. So just for fun, let's add a little bit of light to these to make it make more sense. Okay. So grabbing a kiss of a kiss of white, I'm just going to mix it right in there. And now you can start to see some of that, what that color looks like. And we'll fill that in right here. So it's just a slightly lighter version. And that is changing the value a bit of that color. So again, these are very gray color. We're going to go to premixed shortly, I promise. But this part is important. Okay, get a little rinse on so I'm not messing things up too bad. I've got my basic green here. We'll add a touch of white to it. And that should lighten it up quite a bit. And notice that's a lot springier, whereas this other one was quite, quite bluish. There, now that shows up really well. That's quite pretty. And if I wanted to make it even lighter, I could add just a touch more white. And so I'm kind of staying within the first three rings with my hand mixed colors. We will do a little finger painting and playing in a minute. Okay, and now grabbing our yellowy green. And we'll get some white in there. Oh yeah, that pops that to a, to a prettier color. And now you can kind of see some of what's happening there. I'm offloading a little and we'll grab some white to kind of blend in along the outer portion of that ring. There you go. Okay. And so I like doing the mixing. It does, it does help give you a sense of, of, of color. And then once we do this, you can, um, you can then go through your, your bottle of paints and go, Oh, you know, that sort of maybe lives in that zone, doesn't it? And it will help you kind of identify where maybe you're, your colors, your colors live. Okay, go ahead and get a rinse. Okay, come on. And while we're here, we'll just get that light yellow with some white so that you can kind of see it getting lighter and brighter. A little bit in there. So it's not very often we get to paint a color wheel. Okay. Coming in, now we need to make orange, which of course is yellow and red. So we'll start here in the middle with a hunk of yellow and then a bit of red. I'm gonna go easy because that red will probably be a bit overpowering. We just mix, mix, mix. So right now that looks a little bit more like, like red, yellow than, actually, gosh, that came out to be a gorgeous orange. I'm gonna call that our good orange. So we will do the orange right here in the middle. 
So I will say based on the palette I'm using right now, I feel that the red and yellow really lend themselves nicely to orange. This blue and yellow did not give me the kind of extreme, extreme blah, 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 screaming vibrant green that I wanted. Okay. So since I'm here, we'll also grab, actually, no, I gotta keep going here. So I'm gonna take a little bit of that orange off here and a little bit of the orange off to each side. We'll grab some yellow and mix it in to make a yellowy orange. I don't really get there. So we want that to be a nice, we want it to be, be very different there. I tell you, you know what? Your palette's gonna be a work of art too. And we'll get that kind of yellow tangerine color in between. Beautiful. Off a little bit. And then we'll take a little bit of red and add it to this orange. Maybe need to steal a little bit more of the orange. I don't know. There we go. Okay. So now here we're looking for a ready orange. Not quite a brick, but it's going to be much warmer than your basic than your basic orange. Because this is already a very red kind of or a very warm red that in between here is a little bit hard to see. So here's one where if we say add some white to it, it'll probably show the difference a little bit better. Actually, then it just gets kind of a, a funky peach color, doesn't it? Look at that funky peach there and then maybe a little bit more white to just kind of blend it out to a slightly lighter version. How about you? I do love mixing paint. Mixing paint is so much fun. I feel like, you know, color is my other love language. Okay, so then we'll take some white and put it into our basic orange here. Now you can really start to see how different that that is from the ready orange. This here, they're so dark, it's a little hard to see. So offloading again, don't have to go full offload just because we're working in the same color family. And then this is our yellowy, our yellowy orange, our tangerine. That really pops it right there. And adding a touch more white to it just to get you the, the lighter version. I feel like I lost some of my darker tone right in the middle there. Okay. So now you can really see that, that developing. And so again, we have the R, B, Y. Those are going to be your primaries. The secondaries have the two letters and the tertiary have three letters. I find that like the easiest way to remember things. And it was like a big aha moment when I drew it out this way. I'm like, oh, look, now I know which ones I can call the tertiaries, huh? Um, and then, you know, once we've got this thing built out, you can start talking about like how to use the different colors and color combinations. So let's do just a little bit of red and white. You can see how pinky that guy gets right there. And then if I add a bit more white to it, even pinkier. Okay. And again, there's a lot of offloading going on because I had the white, I do want to kind of... All right, so let's get a hunk of red and a bit of blue and let's make ourselves some purple. Oh, sorry, stay on camera, right? Ooh, that is a chunky, that is a chunky blue. So when I thin that out, it's still looking kind of, well, so here's where I find these purples to be very frustrating. They don't, they don't get that rich tone that I want. And a, you know, a good purple, it's very hard to come by in the mixed world. That's why I like the pre-mixed stuff, especially for the purples. Just gonna add a little more blue, kind of get this just about right to an even mid purple. So I'll call that my mid purple. And so that's the RB. And we'll do two of them right here. In fact, that's a little bit more on the blue side than the red side, maybe just a touch more red. Very, very dark. All right, so we'll take a bit of that off here to the side and a bit of that off here to the other side. This just allows me to then modify the tones a bit. So since I'm here, I'm going to just grab some of the white now so we can see that color. So it's like, a, it's a beautiful amethyst. Okay. 
And that's much more how purple occurs in nature when it's not a flower that has fuchsia bits in it. Offloading just to kind of let some of that white go. And now we'll do the red, the red purple. So we'll grab some more red and we will move it into this purple that I've got to create more of a plummy color or like the inside of a plum. Okay, here we go. We'll get the inner portions here. And again, if you guys have any questions along the way, please feel free to ask. And these I'm using um, basically artist level, level one and level two, uh, tube paints. And see how that one's a very plummy red. We'll grab a little bit of the white to kind of mix it. So you can see that better right here. And then a little bit more white to get the even lighter iteration. Oh, we're getting close. Then comes the fun part. And I was trying this earlier. Oh my gosh. And I was trying to finger paint. And then I had like a big, like mass of paint everywhere. And it was very wet and all my bottles were surrounding it. So it looked like Stonehenge. And then the cat decided to jump right like into my lap and then right onto it. So we've just mixed up a blue purple. So that's red, blue plus blue. So purple plus blue. And I tell you, you know, depending on which paint you use and how you proportion your stuff, your color wheel may end up looking very, very different from mine. And that is okay. It's really not wrong. So adding a bit of the white to get that second color here, which I think helps let it show. So I don't know if you're noticing, but you know, if you're doing a lot of like landscapes or other types of um, kind of nature projects, hand mixed colors are utterly divine. In fact, this one here, this blue purple is almost like a, like a light periwinkle right there. And so these are more like the colors that occur in nature. Loading that junk. Oh, and look, we're at, back to blue. Let me rinse because I got some red stuck in the ferrule here and we don't want that in my blue. And then we get to put away the tube paints, break out a whole new palette and do some more. So I thought I was going to do all the mixing with my palette knife, but I really didn't. It's much easier to just do it with a brush. Okay, so I'll just grab some of my straight blue here, grabbing the white, mix it in. And that's an ultramarine, which is very similar to cobalt. Pretty intense blue. It's got a bit of a purple tone, which is probably why my greens are not, are not so, not so loud. Now, another thing we could mess with another time, that's maybe level two color mixing or color theory is, you know how like you have printers and they have three colors. It's like cyan, magenta, and some sort of a yellow. I feel like I get better color mixes when I use this CYBK. Yes, I, is that right? Whatever, you know what I'm talking about. Cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. But again, that's not everybody's comfort zone. Okay. Cool. So this is what it looks like to be normal. Now, if we were to say, go through our colors, our paints and pick out kind of our primaries, we could start with a Tuscan red. This one's very popular from Deco Art Americana. Oh no, I need to shake that sucker. It's all like gooky. Shake, 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 shake your booty. Hey, Elizabeth, she says, I haven't done one of these since art school and I'm definitely going to make one this week. You know, it's been a long time since I've made one. Well, other than this afternoon on my desk, look. Woo. So those are all pre-mixed paints, which we're now going into. So starting with the Tuscan red, I'm going to use that sort of assume that as my, as my primary. Yep. And so we will kind of go right down the middle. I'm not going to go all the way to the edges because you know what we're going to do? We're going to play. We're going to add some other premix. We're going to get close to the edges. Okay. Offload. And we're going to grab. So I'm going to work my way this way into the oranges and yellows. We're going to grab some true red. This is another one of the colors that we use a lot. 
And on my palette, I don't know if you can see, that's a very deep red and this one has got a little bit more orange to it. I feel like that one fits kind of right in here. And I'm even gonna kind of do a little smushy blend along this line here. And so you'll find that these colors don't necessarily line up exactly with the color wheel. So it's really helpful to kind of place them. And while you're here, if you want to label them, you could say, okay, this one is Tuscan and this one is true red. Here, I'll put a little circle around the other R so we're not super confused. Okay. And then another one of my favorites, and these are all my favorites because you know what? It's color. We have one, one that's called hot red or from craft smart, give it a little shake. And this one to me is more like an orange and I feel like it lands right here in the YRR or yellow or the, the reddish orange color, even though it calls itself red. Now, as you're laying these out, it's helpful to put them on your palette in order just so that you can see. And then look, I actually have a second color wheel. So I'm going to bring that color right up next to my true red and maybe even do a little the blending in between. Oh, what you doing over there, little trouble pants? Yeah, crazy, crazy animal. Okay, I think the change of weather is messing with them. So it may be a little hard to see, but we do have a beautiful blend from a deep, deep crimson, which is the Tuscan, to a bright Christmassy red to the ready orange. Offloading again just to get some of the excess off. And now, oh, well, you have to label it. We'll call that red hot. Now we'll grab Jack O' Lantern, which is a really kind of a nice, a nice orange. I feel like this one is the is orange orange, right? And so if I put orange orange kind of right here, I feel like that's where this guy goes on the spectrum. Whoops, got him in my white. There's now an opportunity for me to find a medium between these two by just grabbing a couple and mixing them. A little bit more of that and sort of finding the in-between. And if you are real careful with this and you choose your colors well and honestly have a wide array of colors available, you can likely um, have an almost seamless blend of color that's really hard to even tell. It just sort of naturally transitions. So offloading again, so that I, I'm looking again, I'm kind of finding my cardinal points. And now we're moving on to a, a more yellowish, yellowish orange. So now again, I've got a craft smart one here called Tangerine. And you'll notice I'm using a lot of different brands. I love the Deco Art Americana, but there are certain zones or areas where I do not feel like they have you know, the range of colors that I really want. And so I buy whatever's gonna fit that bill. So we're gonna kind of take that tangerine color and place it right here. Maybe kind of come right up to the orange and maybe even do a little blendy right there on canvas or on, it's not a canvas. So I'm painting on cardstock, by the way. It just holds up a little bit better. It's a little bit stiffer. It's gonna be a little less rumply. And so you can see that transitions pretty cleanly. It's hard, to, it's really almost hard to tell where the division is between them. So we're on the right track and I'm supposed to be labeling these. So if that was red hot and this was Jack O lantern, and then this is kind of the blend zone. And then this was tangerine. And then we kind of have a blend zone. Next up, let's see, give it a little rinse. And once we've built this color wheel and kind of played with it, there's a lot of options um, and it's going to be a great reference. So yes, you can buy them, but sometimes when you buy them, they don't actually have the, like, like I like this one because between each primary, there's three main colors. And with this one, because it gets so wide, we really have the option to build a lot of the blends or a lot of the kind of interstitial colors for lack of a better term. All right, so we'll take this, yeah, oh, I didn't say. This is Saffron Yellow from Craftsmart. The coverage is pretty garbage, but the color is wonderful. Reminds me of the monk's robes in, I'll go over a little bit right here, the monk's robes in Thailand. If you haven't been to Thailand, it's pretty rad. Okay, so now grabbing a little bit of 
that tangerine to just blend kind of in between the two and kind of create a mid a mid tone so that this transitions really cleanly. Feel free to use your fingers. You notice I went a little bit over with my saffron. Now I could go with like a cadmium yellow here, or I could just go straight with like my favorite, which is daffodil. Really doesn't matter because there's enough blending that can happen. So I'm just going to go with daffodil, which is this guy. It's a folk art. My favorite yellow ever. In fact, I bought it in bulk and stuck it in, stuck it in a squeezy tube, which makes me infinitely happier because I feel like I'm never going to run out. All right. So now we have, see, look at that vibrant, vibrant yellow. Isn't that pretty? And we'll just kind of bring that right up here in the center. And of course you could also have fun and cut each of these colors with a little bit of um, white if you wanted. I'm not a fan of blending these colors with black, even though that's kind of what traditionalism suggests. It's, it, um, I just got, I'm a solid no on that one. Okay, since we're here, we've got our yellow. I think I'll take a, a little bit of the yellow slightly over the edge and offload a bit. And now we're gonna grab some citron green. Again, more Deco Art Americana, just a little squish of that. I don't know if you can see, look at that. That's the folk art. It's like stands up all by itself. So this is a heavier body craft paint. And then this is the deco art, which is a little bit runnier. And yeah, we'll just kind of blend right over that little bit of yellow that I had. This is a good yellow green. We're going to kind of have that, that little in between section a little bit more. I have to like turn this over and do a like a print. Oof, I'm running out of offloading space. Time to get a new page of every color of the rainbow. Now grabbing for sour apple. It's a light, bright green. Okay, just a little squeeze. And so I'm feeling that like the festive green or even the rainforest green are kind of the true green to go here. So I may be squeezing a bunch of colors in here or just kind of whatever. I don't know. I mean, I guess I can edit, but some of these colors are just so fun in this zone that I really like them. So you can see how much more vibrant that is. Whereas I just, I can't mix that without having to work very hard and potentially have like a little bit different, a little bit different um, blue on hand, maybe a phthalo blue, but then a phthalo blue, which often, well, there's phthalo red and phthalo green blue. Um, may give you more of a, um, oh, look at that. May give you other weird colors elsewhere. All right, so there we go. There's some festive green, which is significantly lighter and it's just very, it's like a happy color. And then we'll come right in with the rainforest green. Oops, wow, that was all perfect earlier. Now I just got the gooey stuff, shake, shake, shake. So I don't know if you've noticed, but we often talk about complementary colors. If I look at my true red, directly across from it is going to be direct opposite. The complementary is going to be the green. All right, there's a little bit of green. Look at, I've got a lot of the medium that the pigment is suspended in. Oh, that is not working. All right, let's see if we can get a little bit more pigment, a little less. There you go. Oy. Okay, I'm making a mess. I love this green. It just screams. It just, I don't know, it screams happy and gorgeous and all the good things. All right, so we'll get that guy right in there. It kind of blends nicely with the festive green, but it's a little bit darker. Not quite as, not quite as what's the word I'm looking for, see-through as I'd like. Not uh, opaque, opposite of see-through. And then here's where we gloriously get to cheat and it makes me happy. What is a blue-green but a turquoise or a teal? So here's where, of course, we're breaking out my bestie, mermaid tail. 
And that one, because it's a far jump from there, we're going to kind of blend in a little bit with, with the green at first. So you get kind of more of a, a greenish, a greenish blue. Offload a little bit, and then we can come in with a little bit more of a true mermaid tail. Look at that. Oh, yes. Gorgeous. Did I even get close to capturing that in here with the natural colors? No. And that's okay. And so, you know, if you're actually a professional painter and you're working with students, you know, expecting them to also be able to come up with these kinds of colors with the two paints may not be realistic. And so that's why having a lot of these extra colors in the in-betweens is really nice. So next up, we're using just a plain blue from CraftSmart. I'm sure that True Blue from Deco Art Americana would also be awesome. This is just the bottle that I grabbed out of my rainbow drawers. We're grabbing some of that blue and we'll put it kind of right here. And I'm going to kind of move it this way. It looks like we got a little bit of the green in there. Maybe a touch of the mermaid tail. Do that in between blendy so it's a little bit bluish, a little bit greenish. In fact, you can kind of take it off to the middle and mix a gorgeous, almost peacocky color, which is just a little bit more blue than the mermaid tail. That's nice. Okay. I'm going to give it a rinse because we've got a lot of the, a lot of the green building up in there. And I hope this is making sense to you guys. I realized that it was just watching me paint and kind of mix color, but it's kind of fun. All right, so we'll just intensify that bit of blue there. Now, because there's a couple of options for blue, I'm also kind of in the primary zone going to add some ultramarine blue, the folk art, one of my favorites. It, at least to my eye, has a little bit more of a purple tinge to it when you compare it. So if you look at, you know, this guy versus this guy, you can really see the kind of the intensity. And this folk art is, of course, a lot thicker. So we will just kind of get that stripe right there. Another odd thing about this particular folk art is it's very, um, it's very matte finish. So it looks a little funny when it dries next to a glossier tone. We've got a beautiful transition there. I'm going to come just a smidge over into the bluish purple. Whoops. All right. And that's when we can then add some dioxazine purple or, oh, sorry, violet. Those are, never mind, let me grab the dioxazine. Apparently I grabbed the wrong bottle. Okay. Nope, that's not where I put it. Come on, girl. And, oh, here it is. Dioxazine purple. So it's a little squeeze there. And that's a deeper violet. I'm going to do a mix because, you know, it's very hard to find like a really purpley, purpley blue. And that's like, I don't know, it's one of those like cool crayon colors that I just never find in paint. Oh, Elizabeth says you got to run, but oh, you're welcome. I'm, I'm happy to show you how, how these things compare. Craft paints definitely versus tube paints are different. And I feel like we have so much more range, especially, you know, um, when we're trying to do a quick, quick work when we're working with craft paint. So I used to be a paint snob, but let me tell you, when I got to get these colors going, it really changed my mind. And so you can see how that now gets even purplier. So then we can go straight for the dioxazine, which is going to kind of go right over the purple line here and into the blue. Because there's a couple of different ways of looking at purple as in that purple zone there. Oh, I love that purpley blue. Oh my goodness. I can really get with that one. We're gonna have to come up with a painting with that color. Actually, I often do, but you know, I actually mix it with uh, mermaid tail and magenta, which we will show magenta in a little while. So now to keep going with the purple, I'm gonna grab the purple pizzazz. This one is a sort of a classic favorite. When I place it here next to the dioxazine, you can really see the difference. It's a bit lighter and brighter. And it's actually kind of probably even more so over here on the on the reddish reddish magenta y lighter tone. But we'll kind of get it here. Maybe do a a mid blend between those two. 
And so when it comes to craft paint, if you're trying to tone or slightly shift the character of a color, that's awesome. Um, you know, it's much easier to get kind of to tweak your purple by using a couple of purples than it is to build a turquoise from a yellow and a green out of craft paints. Ah, here comes the best part, well, second best part. Two more colors. As always, ultraviolet because I can't not use this color. This one is, it's kind of on the magenta spectrum. It's a little bit more purpley than a standard magenta Ooh, paint boogers. I'm gonna take this guy here, kind of place it right in there next to that purple pizzazz. And that is beautiful. Look at that, that really pops it. And that's more in the red tone purples. And of course this one is considered a neon. So it's very, very vibrant. From here, final sort of color combo, we're gonna grab some quinacridone on magenta. I have yet to meet a craft paint manufacturer that can get even remotely close to this color. Everything feels washed out and sort of less than. So I'm going with my two paint on this um, because I'm obsessed. And there's my quinacridone on magenta. It's just so intense. And thus far, my favorite is the Liquitex Basics. Um, I want to say the Michaels or Artist Loft brand. It's okay. It's 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 a little more muted than this. And I haven't tried like the twenty dollar tube ones yet. But look at that! Isn't that pretty? And now, if you want to go to go the ultimate, it, interesting in between color, we'll take some of that Tuscan red, just sort of bring it back to the finish, and combine it with the quinacridone. And it just is a beautiful, intense, intense red. Okay. So in effect, what we've kind of done here is we've built this whole circle full, full of colors, right? And so when we talk about, you know, things, I forgot to write down all the colors. I will, I will add that because uh, I've kind of got all the things here in front of me. But now that we've built this, you can say, okay, the primaries, are going to be the single letter. So here we have a primary. The two letters are going to be the secondary. Can you read my scroll? Kind of. And then the three letter ones are going to be the tertiary. So if I want to do analogous colors, it's basically going to be a primary, a tertiary, and a secondary or a primary, a secondary, and a tertiary. But these are analogous colors, right? Because they are all right next to each other on the color wheel. Just like these are analogous colors here. Now, if I get too wide, I mean, this is also considered analogous, or this, if you're looking kind of inside my hands. But if you get too wide, then it becomes a wider range of stuff. And so I generally like to think within three, so if you have a set of three, they're considered analogous, analog, analogous. I don't know, I guess I spelled it right. Analogous. <laughs> um, complementary is gonna be opposite. So you're gonna have a secondary on one side and a primary on the other side. So this sort of little triad bit here between the purple and the yellow, it's gonna be complementary. Or if we're rotating it, my magenta and my lime are going to be are going to be opposites. Red and green. It's our Christmas colors. Orange and turquoise. Lighter orange or pure orange and blue. Yellowy orange and purpley blue. And we're back to the circle. And so, for example, if you are trying to um, Say if you're, you're trying to create shadows, you have a couple of ways of doing it. You could say, all right, my main color is blue and I'm gonna use shadows in this zone. You can also add black, but that tends to kind of water it down. Um, you know, like, so if I'm, if green is my big, is my main color, then I could use the turquoises and blues as shadows. But I could also say I'm doing yellow, I could do a purple shadow. And that's kind of some of the ways that you can use these different colors. 
my favorite. And then you can actually talk about different color schemes that you want to use. But I think we'll save that for another time because I've been going on for a while and this is a lot to take in. So go ahead, take your time, you know, make up your color wheel, use what you have on hand. Um, if you don't have it yet, I do still highly, highly recommend the quinacridone magenta. That's like got goop all over the label um, but there's just no other magenta like it it's it's stunning and then of course this neon uh, ultraviolet is also beautiful um, and then the mermaid tail these are some of my favorites this guy this guy and this guy and we in fact there it's considered almost a, tr a triadic combination and so you'll see me mixing those so if I'm gonna go and really mix and try and make like deep purples and interesting greens I will use this yellow and this teal or this teal and this like magenta to make purple. It's so weird, but it totally works. Or these two to kind of make an orange. Um, and maybe we'll play with that next time. So make your color wheel, take a picture, show it off. I'd love to see it and hold on to it because it's going to be really useful for you, especially as you start to think about your color. So we'll talk more about that next time. But I just wanted to get this made with the colors that we have on hand and ensure that we're really looking at kind of, whoops, uh -oh, it's time to go get my daughter from soccer. <laughs> All right. I will see you guys next time. I love you. It's been fun and have a great one. Bye. Hi, my fingers don't work. There we go.